Hey everyone, it's Game Camiller here, back at you with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Monster Hunter Rise. Now, on YouTube, I haven't really talked a whole heck of a lot about it. But on Twitch, I have been streaming it almost every stream, and I am absolutely loving it. Recently, Monster Hunter Rise just came out with the 3.0 update, and it is beefy, it is awesome, and it comes with one of the coolest monsters ever. Crimson Glow Valstrax, and its armor and weapons are equally as good. Today's video is going to focus on that armor as well as the hunting horn. I'm a hunting horn main, so I'm going to go over my complete build that I'm going with at the moment in the 3.0 update. I'm going to share all the details and why you should go after that build as well. Now, first things first, I want to talk a little bit about that Valstrax fight the Crimson Glow Valstrax. It is perfect. It is amazing. I love this monster. It has such a cool mechanic with it. Those wings, those jet, the ambush. You can't forget the ambush. It is awesome. And I highly encourage you to, to get to it. It does require that you need to get to HR 100 to even encounter that monster. Now you can encounter it beforehand if someone boots up the mission and you can start gathering those materials. You will need two serpent orbs, at least two. One for one of the armor pieces and one for your weapon. In this case, it's going to be the hunting horn in this build. Carving seems to have a little bit of higher percentage, around 3%, but because of those low percentages, you're going to need to face Crimson Glow Valstrax quite a few times to get every piece of material that you need. Or you could be like my friend who gets two Serpent Orbs in the very first Valstrax fight. But regardless, you're still going to need to farm him for a few materials. So now we're going to talk about the armor. If you're just interested about the armor, you're in the right place. The armor is amazing. First of all, it looks really cool, but second of all, its stats are really what makes it very potent. Starting out of the gate, base defense is 80, that can be upgraded to 100. It does require 110k to upgrade it fully for each piece, 550k. But at this point, if you've been playing since launch, you have the means easily to sell materials to get that money. If not, you're just going to need to farm a little bit. There's some interesting guides on the internet to farm easily. Go check those out if you need to. It also comes with two Deco 3 slots, three Deco 2 slots, and two Deco 1 slots. There's a lot of options here with the set, but I will get into what I use for my decorations later on in the video. Now, pure defense is awesome, but what really makes this set is the active skills. The first skill is Dragonheart, and you get it maxed out when you have all five pieces. At level five, you contract Dragon Blight, and at 80% health or less, sets elemental resistances to 50, and you gain 10% attack power. This is huge. It basically nulls and voids elemental attacks on you as well as gives you a big attack boost on top of it on top of that you get maximum weakness exploit level three any attack that hits a weak spot will have a 50 percent increased critical chance you also have maxed out resuscitate what this does is when you're suffering a abnormal status which will most likely be dragon blight because of the set and in that case, you will have a plus 20 increased attack. And finally, the cream to the ice cream sundae that is this equipment. When you have recoverable damage, that means when you have the red on your bar, when you get hit and you can recover that damage, your attack will increase by 15 on top of that. So if you've been following along, you can see that with this piece of armor, you can become a defensive tank on top of that, you have the means to really diss out a lot of damage with Hunting Horn as well. So you can see why this is going to be the set to go after if you just want to last against these advanced missions that just came out. Now for the weapon, the Valstrax maxed out weapon is the Red Knot. 
There's two levels. The second level is going to require that red serpent orb. And you're definitely going to want it for that maximum attack. Now the attack initially seems a little low compared to some of the other weapons. But I'm going to explain why that's not much of a concern with this. First of all, it has a big dragon element, 37. And there's a lot of high tier monsters that are weak against dragon. Combine that with the hunting horn effects, increased elemental attack, increased attack and affinity up, plus the, the wonderful sonic wave for attacking with the XA. This makes this a very potent weapon against monsters that are weak against dragon. Not only that, it makes it a pretty good all around weapon as well. There's some really good rampage options too. We got attack boost for a plus 8 attack. We got Riverin exploit, which increases damage to those monsters. There's quite a few of them in the game. As well as the signature rampage skill of this weapon, the Valstrax Soul, which increases dragon element attacks by 20% when afflicted with dragon blight. Again, this works really well with the Valstrax set to really work with that ability. All three abilities are actually really good. You can switch between which one you think works for you, or you can switch it for particular situations as well. But again, this is a pretty potent weapon when you really look into the nuts and bolts of it. It also has a Deco 2 slot as well. It just makes this weapon even better. As far as skills go, I, I have Overhead Smash. Melody Mode, I go with Performance. You can choose what Melody Mode works for you. And of course you need Earthshaker because this build is all about dissing out their attack. So you definitely want to have that for that maximum damage potential. And finally we get to the decorations which took me a moment to figure out what would be the best to work with this set. Now at first glance for some people it's going to be a hefty goal but it is a truly end game build. We're at 3.0 so you get to this it is definitely worth it. I have seven attack boost jewels here. That's gonna require seven Magnamalo plates. That's gonna make some people's eyes bog out, but you can do it. There's plenty of Magnamalo missions. It is worth it for that attack boost. You get a plus 10% plus another 10. It is definitely worth it, that increased attack. Now I have a talisman that has a deco 2 slot and a deco 1 slot. You're going to need a talisman that has at least that to complete this build. Now on top of that we have three decorations that increases our exhaust power for 40%. You're definitely going to need that. It's going to be a luxury with some of these tougher monsters. Horn Maestro, you're going to need that. You're going to need that if you're a hunting horn man. You, it's a requirement to increase that potential for damage as well. And as far as my talisman goes, it gives me Divine Blessing Level 3 when active reduces damage taken by 50%, as well as Tremor Resistance Level 2, which is definitely a luxury for me. I'm so happy to have this talisman. But even if you don't get that, you want a talisman that's good that has a level 2 deco and a level 1 deco slot to be very effective with the build. And there you go. That is my build. It is truly an endgame build. It is a bit of excess, but it is worth it. If you can make it, you want to at least make that armor. And armor is so good. You can see with the set, it's all about taking that damage and dishing it back out at the maximum potential. In Rampage mode, I'm regularly able to dish out over 300 very easily. It is wonderful for that mode. It's wonderful all around. It's my go-to endgame build right now. It's what's getting me through all these advanced missions easily. I'm curious to hear what you think about the armor, about the build, if you build it, if you would do anything different. Let me know. I also am going to showcase the Palamute and Palico armor here because that is gorgeous as well. The Palamute armor I'm a big fan of. I'm, I'm running around with that of course. Guys, thank you for watching. If you like the content, consider subscribing. I do new videos each and every week. A lot of Nintendo stuff, but in addition to some other video games. We got E3 coming up, and I got a bunch of videos headed your way. Also, check out the Discord and Twitch. Links to all that are in the description box down below. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I will catch you next time.